very often what happens is when I hear a lick that really inspires me, um, I'll, I'll, fi I'll find a way to play the lick, and then, it, and then I really feel creative at that point, and I turn it around. I'll invert it and find different shapes and different applications, you know, and different keys, so it's like in a different, you know, like for instance, this, this one, like this, a double, double bend, it's like... Um, that's kind of a lick that I, I learned by mistake, actually. Uh, I was just bending a string down, and uh, usually this, the other adjacent strings sort of get pushed away to, to allow for the, you know, you're borrowing their space so they get out of the way. But in this instance, the, the B string, I'm bending the G string up a tone, but down toward the floor, I always found it easier just in the case of my index to bend away from myself, whereas with the other string, you know, fingers, I'm towards, my, towards the ceiling. But uh, in this case, the B string slipped underneath the ball of my finger instead of being pushed out of the way. So when I returned the pitch of the G string, I was dragging the B string up a semitone as well. And that reminded me of a lick that's like a steel guitar lick. And I thought, I wonder if I could do the other part of that phrase, you know, with the, if I could do that bend and hold that in place while I'm executing this other little accident lick. And just release everything at once, you know, that would be kind of cool. But when I talk about other applications, you know, it's like that's for that. That sounds very country. But if you do it in that's in the key of E. But if if I make that the key of A and do the same thing, like uh, over that, you can do like a whole other thing. It becomes more bluesy then, rather than country. So. And I started doing on other, other strings too, like low strings. You know? And being that it's not a ma major third apart, the, the, you know, you get a different sound altogether, you know? It's like it becomes a D7, you know? In this case, I'm using the middle finger because that's just easier for me at that particular on the low strings. When I was first starting, I, of course, would land on a, on a specific hero that I, I would concentrate on and think, God, he's just the best guitar player I think ever lived, you know, and I'd try to emulate that as much as possible. But then, um, you know, you realize you're never going to be as good as he is at what he does, you know. So it's a much better idea in any case to, to, um, to borrow from a lot of, you know, to draw inspiration from a wide variety of players. Because at that point, nobody can really pinpoint you as being a lesser version of so-and-so. It's like, man, where did you get that style? You know, you create a new style by doing that. And so that when people hear, hear the person on the radio, they don't know who you, they don't think you're them on a bad day, you know. <laughs> they think, God, that's someone different. Who is this guy, you know? So um, it's, it's a better, better way to do it. I've known a lot of players who, you know, put on a, an Eddie Van Halen hat, and he can do all, they can do all the finger tapping, you know, and then you find someone who will do Ingve um, Malmsteen, and then they'll do, but then they can turn on, they can be Chet Atkins, too, and do all of this fantastic stuff. But it's like putting one hat on, taking it off, and putting another one on. What I've done is, instead of trying to, to, to be able to do all of these styles as, as good as those, those people, it's like I would just borrow bits from them and put it into my own kind of melting pot so that at the end of the day, it's just all one style as a result of, you know, not, not this guy and now this guy and now I'll do this guy, you know, it just, it just all gets thrown into, you know, one, one big, you know, cauldron.